they left to the call of trumpets echoing across the Pearl River. A long goodbye that ended with a wave. It is Britannia's last voyage, the epilogue of empire. This most singular of days began with the most typical of Hong Kong summer weather, heat and the promise of rain. And yet the rain was but a mild distraction, for as the last governor left his residence, the sense of occasion, of emotion, was palpable. This was a moment he had long prepared for, and yet when the last post was sounded, Governor Chris Patton struggled to contain his feelings. The governor is a lover of the pipes and this Highland Cathedral, his favorite tune. The house and the city he must leave, but the flag that is his personal standard travels home with the last governor. His daughters watched, captivated by the moment of history. As the governor left, he held to an old tradition, driving three times around the house. It is a Chinese tradition, a promise that says, I will return. And so the gates closed and the policemen prepared themselves to serve new masters. The house will become a museum. For the departing British, this was not a retreat, but a proud march homewards. Now, said Governor Patton, it was time for Hong Kong people to seize their own future. It has been the greatest honour and privilege of my life to share your home for five years and to have some responsibility for your future. Now, Hong Kong people are to run Hong Kong. That is the promise and that is the unshakable destiny. After that, emotion could no longer be contained. It was Queen Victoria who ruled when Britain seized Hong Kong. Tonight her descendant helped to give it back. Unprecedented though this moment in history may be, we have the utmost confidence in the abilities and resilience of the Hong Kong people. Britain learnt long ago that Hong Kong people know best what is good for Hong Kong. Then the skies exploded with noise and color. The last rites of imperialism finished with, the departing power staged a carnival of light. The generation who will grow to adulthood as Chinese citizens looked on in wonder. And then at the stroke of midnight, history edged Hong Kong out of the arms of Britain. A century and a half of imperial rule ended with the lowering of the Union flag.
for China, this was a moment of pride. For their leaders, an end to what they call an age of shame and humiliation. No longer His Excellency the Governor, but now, plain Mr. Patton, he left the new rulers to their celebrations. On board Britannia, there were tender caresses for his daughters. Tonight, as Britannia sails away behind me, it is hard to imagine an age when men from Britain got into wooden boats to sail halfway around the world. Back then, Hong Kong was a desolate or forlorn place, the most improbable of all Britain's imperial adventures, and yet it was to become the Empire's brightest prize. Fergal Keane, BBC News, Hong Kong, the People's Republic of China.